Hello everyone, T.H. Leatherman here. Today we're going to discuss the differences between traditional and indie publishing. Which one is better? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Why be a writer? Because writers spend a lifetime in solitude in the pursuit of communications. So the first thing we'll go over is traditional publishing. What does it take to be traditionally published? So the first thing that you need to do is write a book. And this is harder than it may sound. It takes a lot of time to put a book together. Certainly getting the rough draft down, you can do that over time. But then once the book is put together, there are the critiques, the edits, the beta reads. There's a lot of things that go into actually making a book something that is publishable. I'll go over the steps of writing a book in another video. The second thing you need to do when you want to be traditionally published is build up your social media platform. That means you need to get out and be where your readers are. That could be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, wherever those readers hang out, that's where you want to be. And that needs to be short, tweet, and to the point. The third thing that you need to do is find an agent. Agents are pretty easy to find. You can pick up the most recent edition of Writer's Market and they'll have a bunch of agents and what they cover in that. The other thing you can do is go to literary conventions. Agents are easy to spot in literary conventions. Just go to the bar and they'll be the one that all the writers are buying drinks for. Now when you're submitting to an agent, you submit what's known as a query letter. There are lots of examples of query letters online. This is what you submit to the agent's slush pile. Absolutely the most important thing about submitting query letters is to follow the directions on the agent's website. If you follow the directions on the agent's website, you will be 10 times more likely to get a response from that agent as if you just submit it raw. The last thing about submitting to an agent is get used to rejection. It'll happen a lot. Harry Potter was rejected 18 times before our agent was willing to represent it. Some pieces of work are submitted over a hundred times before they find a home. Don't let this get you down. It may be that what you're submitting just isn't what the agent needs at that point in time. The next thing that happens is that the agent will submit to a publisher. Now this could be a big press or a small press, but agents have those connections at those publishing companies to get your book accepted and read by those people. Submitting directly, you're much less likely to get it read by that publishing company. The advantages of traditional publishing is that you get a paycheck right away when your book is accepted. This is great because as an indie publisher, it often takes a while to actually build up the fan base to actually make any decent money at it. The next thing that's good about traditional publishing is you get the publisher's marketing engine behind you. This can get your name in front of a lot of people and your story in front of a lot of readers. This is very helpful. The third thing that's good about traditional publishing is that you get all the editing and cover stuff that the publisher has already set up, ready to go right away. Developmental editing, line editing, all the different types of editing that your story may need, the publisher will take care of all of that. The different types of editing will be the subject of another video. Another advantage of traditional publishing is broad distribution. They will put your book anywhere and everywhere that they have an in. The big one here is bookstores. To get into the large bookstores, you need to have a traditional publisher behind you. They frequently will not take indie publishers. Another advantage of traditional publishing is validation. If a publishing house is willing to publish your book, that means that you have pretty good work out there. You don't have to go through lots of self-doubt because you wonder if you're any good. There are several disadvantages to traditional publishing as well. One of them is that if you don't earn out your advance, then chances are you're not going to get another book deal. And the publisher can cancel that contract at any time. 80% of new books traditionally published flop. Another disadvantage of traditionally published is that that marketing engine I was referring to, traditional publishers are putting less and less energy behind publishing all of their books. They may choose a few books that they're very excited about and put their engine behind that, but chances are your book probably won't fit into that. So a lot of that advertising you'll have to do yourself. 
The third disadvantage of traditional publishing is that bookstores aren't really where people go for books as much anymore. People go to bookstores for book clubs and book signings and all sorts of other events, but the audience is a lot more limited than what you would find on the internet. The fourth thing about traditional publishing that you may not like is that the publisher chooses the book cover. If you don't like the cover, that's too bad. They're going to go with their artist and their cover. The fifth thing about traditional publishing that's a little bit of a downer is that they are very formulaic. They have this formula about what sells and they're looking for these particular story elements in the books that they're going to publish. If you have something that fits outside that, they're probably going to ask you to edit that out and make it more towards the mainstream that they want to see. The sixth thing about traditional publishing is that it's slow. It may take you years to find an agent and then for the agent to find a publisher for you. It can take seven to 10 years for your first book to really break through and be published by a publisher. The seventh thing about traditional publishing is that indie publishers keep more of the profits from each book sold. If you're going the traditional route, there are all these extra middlemen in the middle that are going to take a piece of the pie. The eighth thing that's not quite as good with traditional publishing is contracts. These contracts are going to have all sorts of language in there about who owns the copyright rights, if you can get them back, who owns the characters, who owns the story ideas, and maybe even your author name. These are all things that could be included in your contract. This is why it's good to have an agent who's representing your interests. The last thing about traditional publishing is that traditional publishing has been losing its influence for years. Indie publishers are on the rise and traditional publishing is kind of on its way out. They have this wonderful business model and it doesn't really fit with the new publishing reality. They're still trying to find a way to make it work and there are a lot of smart people behind it, so I doubt this trend will continue. So what does it take to independently publish a book? And why do authors independently publish? Because they can, can, can. I myself am an independently published author, but it's not the end all be all. I tend to prefer it, but there are a lot of advantages to traditional publishing that independent publishers don't have. Whether you're independent or traditionally published, the first thing to do is the same. Write the book. From there, things are a little different. If you're independently published, the next thing you need to do is edit the hell out of your book. Critique groups, developmental edits, line edits, all that's on you. And all that stuff costs money. So if you are an indie publisher, all that editing that needs to happen to make a book polished and ready for the market, you have to do all of that yourself. The next thing you probably should do as an independent publisher is make your own LLC. Having an LLC makes it easier to track your income as well as your expenses for publishing. It's also good for protecting you legally. Once you have the LLC created, the next thing to do is to copyright your book. Now, you shouldn't worry so much about sending copies of your book out because once your book is in final form, copyright laws apply to it. However, the additional protections you get by copywriting your book with the Library of Congress is well worth it. After you've copyrighted your book, or maybe just before, you'll probably want to get a cover done. Now, there are all sorts of cover creating software that's out there. However, a lot of people, myself included, hire artists to do the covers for them. Remember that you need to know what the typical cover of your genre looks like so that you can copy that, or rather, use the same elements in your own cover. If you're writing a space opera, there needs to be spaceships on the cover. If you're writing a romance, you need a couple on the cover, scantily and suggestively dressed. Once these things are in place, the next thing to do is to find a publisher. A warning here, avoid vanity publishers like the plague. These are people that will take advantage of you. Many of the publishers will charge you a fee for publishing your book, then they'll charge you a fee for editing, then they will charge you a fee for marketing, and fee, 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 fee. They will fee you into the ground and you'll get almost nothing in return. So who are the good companies to go with? Amazon and all their affiliated companies are a good bet. You can also go with IngramSpark, Kobo, Smashwords, and a few others. 
If you have concerns that the company that you're going with is Vanity Publisher, all you have to do is a simple internet search with that company's name and Vanity Publisher. If it pops up with some complaints, you know that they're a Vanity Publisher and you should avoid them like the plague. The next thing you do as an indie publisher is build your social media platform. Yes, it's good on traditional as well as indie publishers to have a successful and well-developed independent publishing marketing platform, and that includes social media. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, these are all ways that you can connect with your audience and build your audience. The next thing you need to do as an independent publisher is advertise. Why did the author cross the road? To tell everyone about their book that they just published. Facebook, Amazon, and Twitter are the most common ways that independently published authors advertise their books, but there are lots of other ways. The important thing here is to ask your fellow authors what's working for them and find out what isn't working for them. If you think that your advertising dollars may not be spent well in a certain forum, then ask around, see what other authors think of that particular advertising forum. Okay, so what are the advantages of independent publishing? First of all, it's fast. Once the book is edited and put together, you can get it out on the market in a matter of days. The second thing is that you retain creative control over all your rights in your book. Rights to your author name, your characters, your story arcs, those all belong to you. Audio rights, film rights, those still belong to you. No publisher is going to take those away from you. The third thing is that you retain more money off of every sale that you make. 70 and 35% are the most common amounts that you receive in commission off of every book sold. Uh, the fourth thing that's nice about indie publishing is that you can use independent publishing as a way to eventually land a traditionally published book. The more books you have out there, the more a traditional publisher is going to think that you can get the job done and that you're going to be a worthwhile investment of their time and effort. There are several disadvantages to independent publishing. The first thing is that you're doing everything yourself. There is a huge learning curve. You have to become an expert in everything or hire experts to do everything for you. This takes time and money. Another disadvantage is that you're going to be making a lot of mistakes along the way. On the bright side, you'll get to learn from those mistakes and it's easier to recover from those mistakes as an indie publisher than it is as a traditional publisher. <clears throat> the fourth disadvantage is that it's more expensive to publish as an indie publisher. All those expenses that go into publishing, they're all on you. The fifth disadvantage to indie publishing is that it's harder to get into bookstores. Small local bookstores will probably be willing to invest in you if you come and ask them to put your book on their shelves, but some of the larger stores are probably gonna be unwilling to trust an indie publisher. They'll wanna go with their people in New York City who say, these are the books that are going to sell this year. So in conclusion, both systems work. You can go the traditional route or you can go the indie route. Both are successful ways to get your book into the reading public. Traditional publishing is more profitable upfront but indie publisher is more profitable in the long run. As you build your reputation, you'll get to keep more of your revenue dollars by being an indie publisher. My suggestion to people who are thinking about indie publishing or traditional publishing is to spend a year trying to sell your book to a traditional publisher, and if you can't get enough bites, then go the indie route and publish as an independent publisher. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I post weekly. If you have a topic you'd like for me to cover, message me on Facebook. Check out my book, The Burning Sun. It's 99 cents on Amazon for a limited time. The link is below. Speaking of below, if you enjoyed this episode, like below or comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So long, fiction fans.